Welcome to Block 2. My name is Elizabeth Barnett. I'm the Church Relations Director for SOAR Special Needs. So I'm excited to get to introduce our speakers today. Our first speaker is Clarence Haynes. Clarence is the Special Needs Ministry and Champions Club Director at Faith Church, a multi-site church in Metro New York City in Connecticut. With his wife, Clarence founded the Bible Study Club, which is a weekly online Bible study for um, on YouTube. Clarence, his wife Diana, and children Terrence and uh, Kayla live in a small New England town where Clarence can be found rooting on the New York Giants and Nebraska Cornhuskers, uh, as well as writing, putting his spin on recipes in the kitchen, and playing music at his keyboard. Today, Clarence will be talking about using storytelling to build your disability ministry. Please welcome Clarence Haynes. Good morning, everyone. Am I on? Yes. Okay. Um, a, a few years ago, several years ago, actually, we were in a church, my wife and I, and the pastor got up. And he opened up a letter and he began reading this letter. And this was a letter that he got from a visitor who had come to the service. And so in the letter, she said, wow, I enjoyed the service. I loved the worship. The people were friendly. We enjoyed the message. This is what she said. But she said, however, the kids were a little bit noisy in the sanctuary during the service. And so I couldn't fully enjoy the service. And if you could fix the kid problem, then I'd come back. Well, we looked at that and we heard that message and there was a problem with the message. There were only two kids in, this, in the sanctuary that day. And guess who they both belonged to? <laughs> Me and my wife. <laughs> and, and we have a son, 18 year old, his name is Terrence. We have a daughter, her name is Kayla. And our son has autism and also uh, Down syndrome. And even though he vocalizes, he doesn't really verbalize. And he doesn't necessarily know social environments properly and all those types of things. So he might make sounds out of place and all this kind of stuff. But put yourself in a position of us as parents and you completely understand why we recognize that we couldn't stay at that church very much longer. Unfortunately, folks, this is the reality of many parents um, who have children with disabilities and special needs. And someone mentioned it earlier, how they were asked to leave the church. Well, we weren't asked to leave, we decided to leave, but we weren't asked to leave. And so this is the reality. And so the question I want you to think about for a moment, and just, just to get a, a, a consensus of who's in the audience, how many people are actively working in a disability ministry at church? Raise your hand. Okay. How many are struggling to, raise your hand if you're uh, struggling to find ministry workers to help you with disability ministry? And raise your hand if you're not going to raise your hand, no matter what I ask you here today. Anybody in that camp? Got a few of those, okay? So we uh, started, we were, actually didn't we start it, but we were asked to take over what's called Champions Club, which uh, Craig spoke about earlier. And when we started the Champions Club, we had five volunteers, roughly, and they were serving literally two or three Sundays a month. And we had about maybe four to six kids, our son was one of them. And so when we took over, we said, we gotta grow the ministry, we need more volunteers. And so that's what we started out to do. And after our recruiting efforts, we ended up with about 55 volunteers and we would have about 19 to 20 kids. So the question is, how did we do that? And what were some of the things that we did? And I wanna share with you some of the strategies that we used in helping to to grow that, and one of those is obviously using storytelling. Now, before that, before I get there, I wanna share with you four reasons why people don't typically serve in ministry. Now, this is not based on scientific research, this is just based on my own church observations. I've been saved since I was six years old, I've been in church all my life, literally, and I've kind of realized there's a lot of times four reasons why people don't serve. The first one is that they just don't know that there's a need. Um, a lot of times people don't know, and I'll connect this to special needs or disability ministry, a lot of times they don't know it exists in the church. Even in the church, uh, in our own church, people did not know that this existed, okay? So sometimes they just don't know there's a need. Sometimes they don't feel like they have time. You ever heard that one? I just got so much going on, I don't have time to serve. 
third is they don't feel they're qualified. Special needs ministry, how am I going to do that? I don't have a child with special needs, right? And then fourth is either they don't care or they're not willing. Now, don't care is kind of hard to overcome. Not willing could be a result of those first three, okay? And so how do you overcome this? Well, I'm going to share with you exactly what we did one Sunday because um, I used to do announcements at the church. And, and so they call that hosting. And so I used to do hosting. And so I was tasked with hosting this Sunday. And we were talking about special needs ministry. So I got the chance to talk. And so I took full advantage of the opportunity. And so I'm going to share with you exactly a, a, a bit of a story in, uh, that I told that, some, that same Sunday. And I'll do it exactly like I did it to the best of my ability. And just for a moment, let me take off my host hat. And I want to put on my parent hat for a second. As many of you know, we have a son who has a disability. He has autism, and he also has Down syndrome. And one of the challenges sometimes is just getting to church. You know, we would dress him some, one Sunday. I remember this vividly. We dressed him for church, and then we dressed him, and then we went and got dressed. And by the time we came back, he was completely undressed. So we did the process again, and we did something else, and we came back, and he was undressed again. And this process went on a few times, and this was just getting out the door, let alone walking into the building and not sure, and not sure how he's going to behave or respond or if he's going to disrupt the service. And there are lots of parents that feel the same way. And many times when the parents feel that way, what they decide to do is rather than deal with all of that, they just say, you know what, I'd rather just not even come. And church, that is a problem. And to solve that problem, we need your help. And guess what? We have a way that we, you can help. You see, we have a, a special needs ministry here that is designed to serve the people and the parents that are in those particular situations. Now, I know what you're thinking. Well, I don't have a lot of time. Well, all we're looking for is for you to serve 90 minutes a month. Just one service, one Sunday, every single month. You might say, well, I'm not qualified. Well, let me ask you three simple questions. Can you smile? All right, now, if you can't smile, this is probably not the ministry for you. I would probably suggest security, because those guys never smile, and they don't have to, okay? It's not part of the job. <laughs> Can you give a cup of water? And are you willing? Those are the three things we need right away. Everything else you can learn, but if you have those three simple things, here's what I want you to do. I want you to come see me in the lobby after church. I'll be standing in the lobby. Let's come have a conversation, and let's see how you can serve and help people in this ministry. One last thing. Do you enjoy the worship here at church? Yes, right? Do you enjoy the fellowship that you have with other believers? Do you enjoy the preaching and teaching of the Word of God? You see, when you help in this ministry, you're giving other parents the opportunity to experience what you experience every single week. And that's why we need your help. So come see me after church. Okay? And so I did that. Um, that was the, the, the message. And after that, we had people come see me, and I'll explain what are some of the key things in that message just so you can understand it. So there are five keys to building this story. The first thing you need to understand, and I think this is really critical, special needs ministry is not just telling the story of the child. It's telling the story of the parent. Because the child is just the child. My son, he's great, you know, and, and we help him. But the, the ones who are feeling the pressure and the burden of that is not him, it's us. So we're serving the parent. And I think you got to really uh, make sure that the, the story of the parent comes alive, okay? And when you create your story, you have to make sure you're addressing the primary objections that people have. And those are those four objections I talked about earlier. So here are five key parts to the story. The first one is an emotional connection. Here's a fact. When you move the heart and the emotions, that's key to moving people to action. People make decisions with their emotions first. My wife and I, we go to buy a car. She never comes with me because she gets emotionally attached to the car. And then I run the numbers. I don't like the deal. I'm like, we're not going to take it. And she gets all frustrated. So she says, when you find the car and the color with everything in it, then let me know and we'll go look at it. That's how we do it. But you deal with emotions first, and then everything else follows. Have you ever seen a commercial for Feed the Children or Shriners Children or ASPCA? What are they doing? They're touching the heart. Because if they can touch the heart, they can move the body. So you got to touch the heart, number one, emotional connection. Number two, you need a small commitment, OK? 
What did I ask them? 90 minutes a month, one Sunday a month. And what does that do? That, that addresses the I don't have time objection. You mean you can't serve one Sunday a month, 90 minutes a month? It's, it's almost, in, in sales, they call this uh, reduced to ridiculous, all right? It's almost that ridiculous to say I can't serve 90 minutes a month. It almost sounds silly even letting those words come out of your mouth, all right? But you want a small commitment initially. Number three, simple qualifications. What did I ask you? Can you smile? Can you give a cup of water? Are you willing? Now, is this all there is to special needs ministry? Of course not. But if you stand up there and say, well, you need this and 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 every this you add, guess what you're doing? You're eliminating people from even wanting to be part of it. So can you smile? Everybody can smile. Everybody doesn't want to, but everybody can. Everybody can give a cup of water. Now, everyone is not willing, but those are very simple qualifications that applies to just about every single person in the audience, okay? Number four. You want in-person conversation. What do I mean by that? We are living in a, in a digital age. And one of the things we make a mistake of doing, we do this all the time in church, I see it all the time, and I talk to my wife about it, it drives me crazy, is that we treat people in front of us like they're watching online. So we'll do all of this stuff, and then we'll say, go to this website and check it out. Why? That's like we have all these vendors out there and you come to their table and they just say, go to my website. Don't talk to me, you just go to my website. It doesn't make sense. So if you have people in front of you, have face-to-face -face conversations with them about the ministry. So no, it's not go online, see me in the lobby after service. Let's talk, all right? Now, if you're talking to an online audience, then it's absolutely appropriate to say, hey, go to this website. But if you're talking face-to-face, -face, come see me face-to-face. -face. And then, <clears throat> Let's see where it's Yes. And one other thing, when they see you in the lobby, make sure you choose a well-trafficked area. In other words, put yourself by where most of the people are going to leave the building. And I'm going to tell you why. Depending on when they give announcements in the service, chances are they're going to forget everything you just stood up there and told them. And so you need something to trigger their memory as they're leaving the building. So stand in a well-trafficked area, do something to draw attention, have balloons or banner or give out candy, or whatever it is, but something that's going to draw attention that'll trigger their memory. And then number five, you want clear communication. If possible, try to recruit on a weekend where there's not a whole lot of other stuff going on. You want to be the center of attention for that weekend, okay? Because if it's a competition between youth retreat and special needs ministry, chances are the youth retreat is going to win, all right? The men are going on a picnic and it's special needs ministry, chances are the men's ministry picnic is going to win, right? So you want to make sure there's no other competition. And one last thing, if possible, make sure you have the pastor remind the congregation before they leave, before he gives the benediction to the service. Because as I said, they're going to forget. <laughs> they're going to forget, all right? Now, a couple other things. So here's the five things, emotional connection, small commitment, Simple qualifications. Number four should say in-person conversation. I realize that after the fact, but that's all right. And then number five is clear communication. Now, a couple of things to remember. Whoever's the person giving the message on stage should be the person that's in the lobby because that will trigger their memory. So if I stand up here and I give this great presentation and then you go in the lobby and someone else is standing by the table, it might not have as much effect. But if they see your face, all of a sudden, oh, yeah, that's the guy. Let me talk to that guy. This is what happened. Uh, number two, like I said, use something that's going to draw some attention, signs, balloons, whatever. Number three, be friendly and smile. And number four, get their contact information. I said content. Oh, my gosh. I didn't edit this at all. I'm terrible. I'm going to blame my wife because she's usually the one who picks these things up. All right. <laughs> So it should say contact information, sorry about that. Um, but this is what we did, and we did this uh, before COVID, and we went from six volunteers to about 53 volunteers. We did this a few months ago, and we added another 12 volunteers to our team. So it's really important. It can be done, but make sure you do it the right way, and you can also begin building your special needs ministry, all right? Thank you very much, folks.